Here's the thing. If you put young hominids together in a social environment, they invent currencies. They do this all the time, even before cryptocurrencies. If you see a primary school, they trade rubber bands, they trade lollipops, they create currencies of value within this small, isolated society. When the uh, Livestrong uh, rubber bands came out and people started promoting various charities with these rubber bands, they became tradable commodities in primary schools. And primary schools have been doing this for years. Tamagotchi, Pokemon cards, baseball cards, uh, even before that, marbles, and in my father's time, chestnuts. So they could play knockers, which is a weird game that involves banging chestnuts against each other. <laughs> but here's the point. Currencies emerge when you have the social structure for currencies to emerge. And the reason that currencies are emerge in that manner is because currencies are a form of communication. Currency is a language. It is a language that allows people to exchange information about value. Not always monetary value. It's about value of friendship. It's about value of popularity. It's about value of celebrity. It's about value of brand. And all of these things have value, not necessarily monetary value. And currencies are the language by which this value is expressed. So within the primary school environment, currencies emerge even when they didn't have the ability to create currencies. Uh, my friend Davi Barker and I were discussing this topic yesterday, and he uh, told me a bit about Emperor Norton, uh, who was this man in California who made a fortune selling pickaxes to gold miners and mining equipment, because that's how you make the most money, is not by mining, but by selling the mining equipment. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then he did a bad deal which involved buying rice, and uh, um, he lost all his money. And had a dream where he was visited by his mother and told that he had royal blood, and he was in fact an emperor, and should become the emperor of the Americas, because America needed an emperor. So he used his last dollar to buy a Civil, uh, civil War uniform and a big hat and a big ribbon, and went out in San Francisco and proclaimed himself to be the emperor. And he proclaimed the end of the Civil War, fired Lincoln and fired Congress, and he kept proclaiming things. And people started paying attention, and they thought he was ridiculous. And he created his own currency, and people thought he was ridiculous. And then one of the big San Francisco newspapers published his things to see and to tell everyone how ridiculous they were. And because the newspaper published it, suddenly it wasn't so ridiculous anymore. And this currency started being accepted in stores in San Francisco. And people were able to trade the coins of Emperor Norton. And a currency emerged spontaneously, as it does. Because currency is a cultural artifact. It's a system of language. And the best affirmation of that currency was that people started counterfeiting Emperor Norton money. <laughs> you know something has value when people start copying it. So what did Emperor Norton lack? He had the meme, he had the popularity, he had the idea, he had the pizzazz, he had the fame. He lacked the protection against counterfeiting. He lacked the portability, he lacked the transportability, and he lacked the global reach. The next Emperor Norton, who might be five years old, will have all of those things. Because now, combined with a cultural artifact of money, we have the mechanics, the technology of unforgeable, instant, secure, cheap, fast asset transfer over an information network.